So as you guys know, I'm Debbie. I'm the founder of Icing Images, and um, I'm excited um, for these two entrepreneurs, consultants um, to be with us. Uh, we have Lewis in the center, and we have Monica on the right side, but the one that's not me. Um, and they founded the Sugar Strategist. I'm going to let them tell you some stories about it. Hey, Jesse Ann. Hey, Sid. Um, and um, I, our what one hour meeting was what four hours or something crazy like that because something we, like that we you were probably like I need to leave which actually were um, <laughs> um, but um, there was so much they have so much great information to share that I felt it to be really beneficial for everyone here to be able to freely ask some questions. Um, I know this is an odd time, at least what I'm finding is um, it, like things like Amazon, for me, that's my competitor. Um, and and it, it's learning how to shift. We had to shift right in, in um, during COVID and we, there's another shift now. It's just constant shifting um, for many reasons. But um, anyway, I, I just, I really enjoyed my conversations with them. I'm actually hiring them for some consulting because I believe in what they're doing and they can definitely help me out. Um, and so um, I'd like it if uh, you each tell me just a little bit about yourself and then the, the, the business and you guys can start, um, if you want to start asking questions or um, thinking about some things in the meantime, that would be great. All right, who wants to go first? All right, I'll, uh, I'll start. So I'm Lewis, uh, as Debbie said. Um, so very quickly, my background is uh, mostly in uh, business, um, legal, finance, um, and technology. So that's where I spent most of my career working for very large companies um, like IBM and American Airlines and, and uh, large companies like that. Um, then about 15 years ago, decided I'd had enough of the corporate world and I would start my uh, own company. Um, have since been involved in a number of companies. Uh, that company that I started 15 years ago is still around. It's a software company, uh, probably do about $300 million in business this year. Um, and, and offices in, in eight different countries. Um, and, and, uh, during one of my ventures, which was to work with small businesses, um, I met Monica in a networking group, um, and at the time, um, she owned a chocolate manufacturing business that also had a bakery uh, and cafe component um, and was built around a lot of what uh, you guys are doing, which is custom treats. And I will let her tell you a little bit more about that and then how we got to Sugar Strategies from there. Yeah, so my background is in marketing and business. So that's why I started in school. Went into consumer goods and then later went into um, new product development for cookies, cakes, and muffins. So production on a high level, um, distributed on freezer trucks, um, instantly quick frozen type products uh, that, are, that were distributed through the food service industry. And then from there, I found my passion for creative desserts and things like that and started a company in 2008. Um, similar to probably many of you guys, I um, focused on the customization of stuff. So my company is called Sweet Signature, so creating signature treats. There are endless possibilities, if done right, of the opportunity that you can create with custom treats. Um, so after three years, I was already doing six figures, invested back into my business, invested heavily into my e-commerce site. Um, and then from there, I decided to think about a storefront and or manufacturing facility. So I built that and uh, opened that in 2015 in Sterling, Virginia, for anybody that's familiar with Northern Virginia, um, with the plan to sell the company within 10 years. So that was always my plan. Um, as Lewis mentioned, I met him in a business networking group. I was preparing to sell about year six and a half or so. And uh, I needed some help. I needed another opinion. I had an opportunity on the table to sell it. And... I needed an outside perspective. Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So I met Lewis and, and in that conversation, I was thinking, man, I wish I would have met you years ago. You bring such a different perspective to what I was trying to do. And I felt like as an overachiever, as many of you probably are very detailed type A type people, um, I just felt like I could have done so much more had I had another person that understood what I was trying to do. So long story short, he helped me sell 
um, sweet signatures between the two of us. Obviously, he's a paralegal as well, so he helps with all the contractual stuff. If you're having trouble understanding your state laws and things like that, um, he helps with a lot of that. If you're looking for business partnerships or operating agreements and that sort of thing, he does that. But he helped me with the legal paperwork to do the negotiation, but also just as a sounding board, helping me figure out how to navigate that. Um, and in that process, after selling the company, we realized, man, we're both really passionate about helping entrepreneurs, right? And as Debbie mentioned, it can be high level entrepreneurs, right? People that have well-established businesses, or we've got people that are just starting out. And um, we have another company called Maloco Consulting, which is kind of how it started. But then with Sugar Strategist, I really wanted to have a brand that could help people like myself, right? To be the person that I needed when I was in your shoes. Um, because a lot of it that you see on social media is conflicting information. Some of it is helpful. Some of it makes things more confusing. And given the nature of what you guys are doing with icing images, you can do really, really well. Um, but a lot of it is the business component that goes behind the customization, right? So better understanding that. So thanks, um, Debbie, for having us today. And yeah, so that's how I met Lewis. And that's where Sugar Strategist was born. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, so I switched my screens and I keep looking over here and that's the delay. So I need to move over here because I kept looking over there. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that a long time ago. Um, so um, in our meeting, uh, there were a lot of areas that I knew um, that I needed more help with. Um, first of all, I am type A um, and I know that I can do that things better than everybody else can. And so... I have to do everything, and that's just not true. <laughs> um, I can be better at the things that I'm really good at while working with others to help me in areas that I have to study and learn in order to do well. Um, and, um, you know, I, I brought up Amazon before, and it, it's interesting. So for, as I mentioned before, Amazon is one of our competitors, and everybody has different kinds of competitors. And for some of you who are doing just edible prints, they're a competitor of yours as well. And some of the things that came out um, of our conversation was really just really kind of amazing. And so much so they're going to work alongside me. Um, we've carried on conversations from our office, for example, and talked about how we don't understand why people go to Amazon when they can get it faster and usually cheaper directly from us because we ship really fast. Um, so that's one of the struggles I had, and I'm being very open here and a little vulnerable. Um, I don't like to tell people that I have problems because my life is perfect. Um, <laughs> um, it's nothing is. Um, so uh, that that for me that was a huge eye opener in a lot of the things that we covered. Then um, I guess it was towards the end of we talked a bit about blue, and then we also uh, we went back into the warehouse towards the end of the conversation, and Monica got a piece, a little big site, I guess, big site of our mega printer, which you can actually sleep on, I think. Um, and her reactions were amazing on the things that you can do with this printer. And um, it was just like new idea after new idea. And I'm like, whoa, um, I was kind of taken back a little bit, um, which was a good thing. Um, kind of mad because I didn't think of it myself. But um, that's what that's what partnership is about. So, if you know, for me, um, I work with a lot of people um, in many different ways. But having somebody come in at a higher level alongside me um, to uh, really question and and back up the things that they're saying is, is to me a huge perk. It's like having a partner without having a partner because they're consulting with you rather than taking your business and, and they're part of the owners and we're part owner, you know, none of that. So um, I haven't met anybody quite like them and I've met a lot of people. There's a lot of amazing firms in our industry that focuses on business and things like that, but it was just a different level because um, uh, for many reasons, if you heard her background, um, Monica's background, it's very heavy in a very successful business, including it was, you had the um, wholesale, you had the storefront, you had the, a chocolate company, bakery, and all of this stuff into a huge successful business. And then you have Lewis, who has the, the 
hard. I, to me, it's the harder part. And probably you guys will probably see it too. I'm guessing because it's, it, it's the easier part for me. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask. Don't ask me to get involved in the other side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have the mind for that technical detail, the legal stuff, the stuff that for me I don't like, but it's a necessary um, yeah. evil for me. I don't want to call it evil. It's really yeah. Not. No, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, Debbie, we talked about it when we were there. Like, we're very big believers in doing the things that A, only you can do, and B, that you're passionate about, right? Because those are the things that you're going to knock out of the ballpark. Um, and if you're slogging through, I don't know, entries in QuickBooks, um, and it's taking you 10 times as long as a bookkeeper who knows what they're doing would, um, that's taking away time from doing the business Um uh, things that only you can do. So if you're a, a cookie artist um, and perhaps you're the only one that can bake or pipe the cookies to your standards or whatever it might be, uh, and if you're taking yourself out of the kitchen because you're spending hours doing bookkeeping, right, it probably makes sense to engage a bookkeeper. Um, and, and so, you know, I think that's true no matter sort of where the business is from day one um, all the way up to, you know, to the point of, of exit. Uh, you know, when Monica sold her business, she probably could have done it completely herself, but it might have taken a lot longer. The outcome might not have been as good, um, not because she isn't good at that stuff, but because it's impossible for one person to know everything. Right. And so that's one of the big reasons that we created Sugar Strategists is to sort of bring that that village of, of thought. Um, you know, we all can get in a rut as we do things year after year after year. And sometimes the most obvious things just don't appear to us. So, um, yeah, we're, we're big believers in exactly what you've described, um, which is, you know, knowing what you are the A plus player in and learning to acknowledge uh, what the you're the C plus player in and getting help on those on those um, C plus things. I mean, we do it in our own business um, every single every single day. I mean, I think that's why we went into business together is because uh, his skill sets are my weak points, right, and vice versa. And so I think you need a teammate like that, even if it's not a permanent teammate like a business partner, um, but somebody that you can bounce ideas off of. One thing that we talk about in one of our webinars is. It's really hard to find people you can talk to, right? You've got your friends and you've got your family. They've heard all your stuff, right? But you don't want to be venting. You actually want solutions sometimes, right? And a lot of the times the people with the solutions are their business owners. But how much time do they have, right? We all know how much time this stuff takes as a business owner. How much time do they have to really give you sound advice, right? Um, and sometimes they don't have time where you feel like you're burdening them with the questions, right? And so that's where we come in a lot of times. We're just a sounding board. While we help, while we listen to some of your challenges, we can also offer solutions. Not only do we offer solutions, in many cases, we actually do the solution, right? So if you're struggling with social media because it takes a lot of time, you're not that great on Canva, or you're trying to do stuff like that, like design work and things like that, that's where we come in. We actually take it off people's plates so they can focus on their baking, their making, their decorating, and, and all that kind of stuff. So find, find that circle of trust uh, with people, whether it's us or somebody else that um, can really help you navigate and challenge some of the things that you're thinking or um, doing. Yeah. Um, so we have several blue owners in here, and we have people who are going to just get their blue blues, and some that are not even in the bar, ballpark of a blue printer. Um, and um, I guess how how has that helped your business? Like, what have you seen? Um, seen seen it build in your business or take things off because one of the things when i designed this printer it was based on how can we save people money obviously um that's always one thing i like to do um you have to spend money unfortunately to save money sometimes um how does it how does it affect your ongoing cost your operations of the printer like long term is it saving you money the, biggest thing for me, um, because I never have enough time, is the time that it brings you back. Um, mm -hmm. Because you can push print and walk away and go do something else. And I'm a huge multitasker. I get a little slower at it as I get older, but um, it's important for me. Like, it's very hard for me to sit here and not play with something because I have to do more than one thing at once. Um, you know, and i and, and, yeah, I mean, I, we were talking about it today in the office. I think we're all ADD in some regards. 
because our minds just go and go and go and go. Um, so yeah, I'm playing with the part, you know, right now because I have to, I have to do something else. But it's the time, and um, I'd like to get some feedback from those who have. There's some people on here that have had the blue for a long time. Others just recently got it, and then the new people who are on here um, that are waiting, because there's several people on here that are waiting. Um, what was the purpose of you purchasing it, and how did you think that would affect your business? Um, so it'd be interesting to hear some of you all comments. Um, also, if you are, um, you got the blue, now what do you do? That kind of thing. Um, we try to help you before you purchase it so that you have a good plan in place um, when we know that we can help you. Um, do you have any questions about that or best ways to market something, whether it be online or any in, in person? Just like to hear, hear some feedback on that while we talk about other things as well, because it takes right. a little bit before the questions. Yeah. And while uh, while we're waiting for feedback, you know, uh, just a, a, my kind of two cents on the the topic you just you just brought up there, uh, you know, Monica built a very successful custom uh, treat business that certainly did birthday parties and anniversaries and things like that, but but the core of it was built around corporate customers, right, um, and corporate branding on treats and. Um, the big thing with corporate branding on anything, uh, we still do it today on things like polos and things like that, though we're not in the treat business directly anymore, um, is, you know, corporations demand a higher level of quality and consistency. And that was one of the things we were very impressed when we first met you with the machines, um, the blues that we saw, um, I think we were at SoFlo, if I remember correctly. Um, and the quality of the print um, and the consistency as you were doing the demos uh, for folks um, that I'll just say varied um, very much compared to another known brand that also happened to be at the show uh, where the first thing we noticed was that a bunch of the logos were cut off on some of their, their, their sample runs, right? So, I mean, I think for, for me, one of the things that I was really impressed with was just uh, you really seem to build a, a machine and, and system that is designed um, not just around the cost savings you mentioned, but around the quality and consistency, which I think for folks in this space becomes really important if they're looking um, to grow uh, to any significant size, because A, corporate's going to have to be a part of that, and B, we want to produce products that are bringing customers back because acquiring new customers over and over again is a sure way to kill a business. And so, um, yeah, great, great job with, with your products there. And I really think you set people up in a big way um, to sort of move up market in this space. Yeah, and I, that's the one thing I love to do. I love watching people excel in their businesses and see them grow. And I think you you have that, that same, it's like, oh, what can I do to help you like explode and then just watch it go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's for me, that's kind of fun. Um, but I have noticed, and we've got several comments that we'll read in just a second. Um, I have um, noticed more blue owners getting government um, type and uh, orders that are much larger and lead to other departments of that government facility. Mm -hmm. um, same with corporations. And there has not been anything available that can handle larger orders at a reasonable rate. So it's just, it wasn't out there. Um, and, and even what was out there just couldn't handle the quality, um, you yeah. know, or you're putting a piece of pa edible paper on something and it's taking you so much time to, to you know, you touch on the printer, you're, you're, you're designing, you're touching the printer, you have to stand by the printer, then you have to take the image, put it on something, and sometimes you even have to cut it depending on what you're doing. And that's a lot of work. And so the larger orders, and I'm talking from maybe 500 on up to uh, like Susan Chianis, which we always refer to, 17,000 cookies uh, that she did. It was her and her mother, you know, and it's like... Yeah, Monica, Monica's smiling because she 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 tells a, a story in a lot of our sessions um, a, about a piece of machinery that changed her business and and an order. Do you want to? Yeah, so I think it's great that people are thinking about how they can do things faster and quicker, right? So I was in the same position. You have to set monetary goals, right? You don't want to put yourself in a financial compromise to buy a machine. You want to set your business up so that you can 
afford that next level, right? So the, the first investment that I made was a $20,000 machine. It didn't do half as fancy stuff that you guys do with any of your stuff. Mine was just a chocolate and roving machine, right? I was doing a lot of Oreos and I was actually, because this technology wasn't around like, or maybe it was like really expensive. I didn't know about it. So the fact that I know all this stuff now kind of makes me just want to like scream inside because I wish I would have known sooner. Um, because I was printing 35 images on a sheet and taking them all off one by one and hand placing them on cookies, right? So if I can do it the way that I did it, you absolutely can do it the way that you're doing it. So I had to spend, so I spent $20,000 and I wasn't going to get financing. This company didn't offer financing for this machine. So I had to pay for it in cash. And the cash that I paid this machine with was the cash that I earned from orders, right? So I was doing about 1,600 Oreos per month for one client, okay? Um, and so I knew I needed this machine. I knew how many um, cookies I could make in an hour with the machine. And I knew how long it would take for me to pay off the machine, right? Essentially, I'd already paid for the machine, but technically from a business standpoint, from a break-even standpoint of what that looked like, right? So make sure that you're, while, when you get the machine, make sure you are looking at the business itself as well to figure out what you can do better from a business standpoint to grow your previous business much more. You can get into a position where you're just kind of complacent. Now you got this machine so, machine, so you get more time, but how are you using that extra time? How are you using that extra profit back in your business to then continue to get to the next stage of whatever that is? Maybe it's more orders, maybe it's another product line, maybe it's the next bigger machine, uh, whatever the case may be. So just make sure you're thinking about it from that standpoint. If you're not at the point where you can afford a machine, make sure you're taking a look at your business to figure out what those goals are and how you can get there. Right, because we all have to start somewhere, right? This isn't something you just get in week one, for example, right? If you are thinking about doing this full time, it is totally doable with the technology that they have set up at Icing Images. Absolutely doable, okay? But if you're a cottage baker, it is going to be less doable than if you were a certified, um, depending on where people are located, if you are permitted to be able to ship, right? So if you can ship, you can put out a lot more volume and you can open your opportunities tremendously. It might be a lot of paperwork. It might be, you know, that your kitchen has to be certified. It might mean that you have to pay rent somewhere. But if you want to do the numbers, I would make that a goal that you can ship product because that's really where you're going to get your volume. Sticking to your neighborhood and your immediate community or in Virginia, for example, where she's located, where we're located, um, it has limitations to the state of Virginia, right? And in Northern Virginia, where we are, you've got Maryland and DC right there, but you can't sell to them. So um, look at those opportunities and make sure you're looking at the numbers from a business perspective of what your goals are and what you need to be able to do to get there. Um, whether you don't have a machine and your goal is to have one or you have one and you want to make sure that you're using it most efficiently from a business standpoint. And that's one, one thing that you're talking about with all these goals and everything. I know for some people that may be like, goals sure. yeah. like for my business quite honestly i just do i just keep working keep working and right. keep, pushing, keep pushing and keep moving getting better and better and better and goals are difficult for me mm -hmm. uh, they're they're really hard they really are hard um and i think um for several reasons sometimes it's okay now i have to get this special licensing how do i do that that's not what i'm good at just like i was talking about before mm -hmm. um and so that's where you guys kind of come in too, because you can do as anything from just a chat and giving you ideas all the way up to taking care of things like that for you. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to have those goals because you have to have something tangible to know if you are getting closer or not closer, right? And those goals could be the number of orders you have in a month or a week, it could be the number of dollars in sales that you have in a month or a week. You have to have an idea of how well you're doing. The challenge is also the seasonality of it, right? In the summertime, a lot of times for me, especially because I was a lot of chocolate, um, was a lot slower. Everyone's on vacation, taking breaks, kids are out of school, that sort of thing. And the crazy time was during the holiday season. Um, but so you want to make sure that you have goals for both. What can sustain you through the slower time? What can you, how can you maximize that opportunity during the high peak um, seasonality? Yeah. And that's really important. Now, Crystal, I, I, I'm going to jump to Crystal's questions, guys. Sure. I, I what you have there and it's yeah. really good and I want to get come back to it. But 
Um, Crystal has a question. She says she's in a military town, which means she has to start over building my client base every two to two and a half years. Yep. So it's she wants to have some suggestions on how to deal with that situation. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to make an assumption and uh, Crystal, if it's wrong, please add add to your question. But it sounds to me like you're in a town that's heavily populated by the folks that live in the military base. They're rotating out, but you're staying put. Right. That's what it sounds like to me. And if it's and if it's I'm wrong, please let me know. But in that situation, um, I think it becomes even more critical to get more involved with other local businesses in your area who are also staying put, right? Because when you bring a new audience in, your references, your reviews, um, and your relationships are gonna be incredibly important, right? So you want um, the coffee shop that everybody goes to, to tell people about you because you have a relationship with them um, or you want the, the uh, wedding planner uh, who happens to be in that town to know about you so that they're referring you to the folks, you know, people getting married before they deploy, whatever it may be, right? But that they're referring uh, you to, to them. So I think for even, it's already important to have those kinds of contacts in the business community. In your case, it's even more important because that's sort of the stable part of your community there. Um, and you're all, and, and it's, you're going to need to rely on each other, um, to, to build that new customer base every, every couple of years. Monica. Yeah. I want to chime in about something that's incredibly important and absolutely essential when it comes to trying to get corporate clients. They were a huge part of my business. You have, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you guys on a few things. One is, do you have a website? I'm not talking about a Facebook page. I'm not talking about an Instagram page. I'm talking about a dedicated website for your business. Whether you can ship or not is a different story, but you absolutely need a place where people can go to see your work in a professional manner. The second thing is an email. Do you have a professional email? If you don't have a professional email where it's orders at your company name.com, that's going to be another challenge that I'm going to put out to you guys. Using a Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail account to talk to people in businesses is not going to be professional enough to get taken seriously by bigger companies. You might get taken seriously by local companies, right? Because your local mechanic or something like that, a lot of them also have those because they just haven't needed it, right? But when you want to get taken uh, seriously, you're going to want a professional online um, uh, presence which is going to include your contact form or an order form or an inquiry form, depending on what you're allowed to do in your state, right? I would say if you are sending text messages about your orders, that's not the direction you want to go. We see a lot of Facebook messaging. We see a lot of text messaging. We see a lot of personal email accounts. We see a lot of websites that could use some um, fluffing up. You have to remember what you're selling is an edible product, right? We're selling food, mostly to people that have never tried our product before. So what you're showing on your website has to look appetizing. It has to look bright. It has to look clear. It has to look tasty, even if it's a sugar cookie with a beautiful design on it. Okay. How you present your professionalism on your website is going to be essential to how people perceive you as a brand. So if those aren't things that you're good at, if those aren't things that you've taken care of, I would start there, right? Those are going to impact your business. You can have a great cookie, but if you don't market it well, nobody's going to know about it. You can also have a bad cookie and market it incredibly well and get a lot of sales, but you may not get repeat customers. So make sure that if you're looking at corporate clients, which you absolutely should, if you're looking to grow your business, you have some of the fundamental things taken care of. Again, your website, your email, your photography, um, things like that. Make sure that you're using a website that isn't incredibly long, right? We've seen some domains that are, you know, built on other platforms where you're not paying that extra $10 to get just your name. Um, I would pay the $10 to get just your name, right? If that's the difference between wixsite.com forward slash Monica's Cupcakes, if I could pay $10 a month and just have to say Monica's Cupcakes.com, do that, right? Those little details will 
make a big difference. Yeah, and, and just uh, Debbie, I saw you um, answer Kelly's question um, there, but I'll tell you, we actually ran into it recently with one of our customers. They were trying to sell to, into a financial institution and because of all the scams and everything out there, they were quite literally prohibited from contracting, even for cupcakes for an office party with anyone that didn't have their own uh, email domain. They were period. They could not do business with someone using a Gmail account uh, from a, a, a whole bank policy, internal policy. Um, so yes, in that corporate space, you'll also see that. Also remember that depending on the social network, so if we're talking about Facebook or uh, TikTok or Instagram, um, those platforms are blocked on anywhere from about 20% at the low end uh, for something like Facebook, up to over 60% of corporate networks on the TikTok end of things. So if that's where you're um, uh, trying to go from a customer perspective, and that's where you're doing your marketing, there's a chance that a large portion of your customer base will never actually see um, your your marketing simply because they, they are not allowed to, to, well, to use those things on the corporate network. Right. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, like, we get a lot of, we get a lot of fraud orders, um, and we know how to deal with them and everything, but most of the time it's at gmail.com. And so I see why government facilities or even a lot of offices will block that kind of thing because, right. 100%. Yeah, I mean, in the government, um, in financial institutions, in medical uh, places, anybody that has sensitive information, they're deathly afraid of the nightmare scenario where they get hacked and uh, private medical records or government records leak. Um, and so they are really, really strict on, on especially in those types of industries. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so we got, we got several questions. Yep. Um, um, uh, proper insurance was one, and the other one is, um, well, I'll, I'll get to the next one after that. So, yeah, uh, but proper insurance is, is an easy one. Yes, yes, and yes. It's not expensive. Liability insurance is not expensive. Uh, we all know how people sue these days, and we just do, right? Someone chips a tooth on a walnut in a cookie, someone chokes on something. Uh, you make something with peanuts and even though you thought you cleaned your counter well, there's enough for someone with a really strong allergy and they have a reaction and without the right insurance, you could find that your personal assets are, are on the line. Um, and that's even true in the cases where you have an LLC that doesn't always protect you depending on how the action is, is classified. Um, and so, um, especially for cottage bakers, I mean, and we're not talking about this in another car insurance payment in most cases, it's 20 or $30 a month. Um, and, uh, it will protect you and they will pay for a lawyer so that even if you win, it's, you don't have to come up with tens of thousands of dollars to defend yourself at the, at the outset of it. So a hundred percent on the insurance question. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's like one of the first things I bought when I started. Um, I will tell you, I want to mention this cause you said insurance and chipping teeth and stuff like that. So, um, I mentioned before that Amazon is, is, is rough for me. Um, one of the problems, and many of you heard me say this before with, with, with Amazon, is when you're buying an edible product, so if you buy an ingredient or a mold even off of Amazon, you need to know that it's a real company. So when I'm purchasing things like that, I actually look for their domain. And if I can't find that domain, I don't order for them for anything that's going to go in the customer's mouth. Or for you, it would be on something that would be given to your customers. So your edible inks, for example, um, you gotta be really careful on Amazon because companies out there are just putting stuff in cartridges. It's not made in a food safe area. And so if you buy stuff like that and you're not insured, um, they're not gonna help you, number one, the, the companies who come and go on Amazon and you better have your ducks in a row. I, I would stay away from anything. You do not know what that company is and you know, you know what I mean. Um, so that's important. Um, sorry, I, I had to go on my tangent. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, just to finish the insurance question, Stacy asked a question about flip specifically. So okay. to, to to us, there's sort of two big pieces with the insurance. It's one is the insurance company solvent and going to play pay claims. Flip is state regulated. They're solvent. Their rating um, from Moody's who says whether they have money is uh, is fine. 
Um, the, but the part B is making sure you're getting the right coverage. So we've worked with bakers before that go online and they answer questions, you know, on a, on a completely online insurance experience, not knowing um, exactly whether or not like some questions are like, eh, I think so. And, and then at the end of it, they buy the wrong insurance. So we worked with someone who had bought what's called errors and emissions insurance. Errors and emissions insurance is what lawyers get if they give you the wrong advice. Consulting companies like us get if you do something we say and it bankrupts you, right? And you sue us, something like that. But it would do nothing for a baker, um, right? Uh, and so they've been paying for insurance for a couple of years um, that they could never have ever filed a claim on because nothing they do would be covered by that policy. And it came because that's when they answered some questions, they didn't quite know the answer and they got it wrong. So we strongly recommend working with a local agent. If you have one, you trust. Um, if you don't, you're welcome to reach out to us. We've got referrals all over the country. We love local State Farm folks. State Farm loves working with bakers. They love working with cottage bakers. Um, and they're no more expensive than Flip or any of the other guys online. The agents don't charge you to talk to you and they will understand how much you're selling and what kind of equipment you have and all of that. And they'll recommend a policy that fits right um, and covers you whether you're at home or in a commercial kitchen or, or whatever the arrangement might be. So um, yeah, that's yeah. That would be the advice. That's on interesting that. you said that because the finance company that we work for and uh, work with, um, yeah. if people want to uh, finance things, it's State Farm. And I always thought that was odd, but now it makes sense. Like, why did we get State Farm? <laughs> You know? yeah, so interestingly, State Farm is the largest commercial insurer in the country, period. Yeah. And they're really big in the food space because they're one of the insurers that has taken the time to understand it and really build a business in it where a lot of the other insurance insurers have just not built that expertise. So they really do well in the space. We, we love working with them with our with our customers. Yeah. And working with somebody local to you, I think, is really important because yeah. they'll go to bat for you on weird things that they never heard of before yeah. or something it, wonderful. They're licensed in your state for a reason. They know the state laws. They know what liability coverage looks like in your state, which will have different riders than in, in the neighboring state and all of that stuff. So working with a local person, uh, we, we definitely, we highly recommend. Yeah. Um, Avis has a question. Do you guys review websites? She's not a good webmaster. In fact, she hates it. I understand. But she could use somebody to look at it and to tell, tell what she should do to fix it, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Lewis and I work on different aspects of a website. If you're having technical issues or let's say you don't have an email account and you want an email account and you have a website already, Lewis is going to be the guy that helps you with that sort of thing. Um, both of us, because of a business background, that's the difference between going to us and using somebody like GoDaddy, for example. We can actually have conversations about what you're looking to get out of it, how you want the users to use your site. Um, making sure that your branding is uh, consistent, right? So sometimes we'll see logos with a white square around it on a website um, because people don't know how to remove the background, for example. Making sure that your colors are consistent, making sure that your text is legible and consistent with your branding. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Those are all conversations we can have, whether you already have a website and you're looking to improve it. Um, maybe you've never gotten feedback. A lot of people in this space DIY their website, which is a great starting point. But if you're really starting to, you know, progress and move forward, I would consider having somebody like us take a look at it because, um, again, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and then, uh, and yeah, so we can talk to you about adding a form or a contact form or, you know, take a look at your photography, maybe give you some pointers on that. Um, how is it laid out? We just met with a client today and they had, I don't know, like 10, 12 tabs at the top. It was just too much information, so not a great user experience, and it turns out they did it themselves. Again, not a bad starting point, um, but now that you know how people are using it, what information you need, um, a refresh is great. So yeah, we can absolutely help. If you don't have a website, we can help you from the very beginning. We design the websites ourselves. We don't outsource them, um, and so we have a great um, process with that where we're very hands-on, and we communicate regularly about what it's looking like, how it's coming along, and all that kind of stuff. So basically, you can do anything from reviewing it and giving them pointers all the way up to doing the website for them, correct? Right. Yeah. And when we build websites, um, we do it a little differently than, than other folks beyond the consultative process that Monica mentioned. Our customers own their sites in their entirety, right? So at the end of the process, it is turned over 
to the customer. They own it. They can edit it. They can they they can um, move it to another platform. I mean, it's entirely within their control. Um, a lot of folks continue to engage us because they don't want to have to deal with it on a day to day basis. They rather lob a, a, a copy of their fall menu to us and have us upload it and format it. Other folks take it over entirely, but we generally build on a um, couple of different user friendly platforms with our primary one being Wix because it's easy to hand over if you can work in Canva or you can do a PowerPoint, you can you can um, uh, work in Wix to maintain your website. Because the last thing we want is, you know, we get the folks that go out and they get websites built and someone builds it on something like WordPress uh, and then they they can never walk away from that person. They're basically paying them a maintenance fee forever because you, you can almost not uh, manage it yourself, right? right. So we, um, we walk, we, we allow, you know, the, the baker or whomever to walk away and, and turn it over completely if they want, or take it completely back and manage it completely themselves, um, uh, moving forward. And uh, Avis, I saw you mentioned Shopify. So we also work with Shopify. Um, and generally we recommend Shopify, uh, if you're doing a lot of e-commerce, right? A lot of um, uh, generally a lot of pro products or a lot of complexity to those products mm -hmm. um, uh, and so on. Uh, if it's more of a brochure wear site with, I'm going to call it incidental commerce, um, then that's not usually our platform of choice because it really is built for the commerce um, side of things and, and can be difficult, as you mentioned, to manage uh, more from a design and look and feel perspective. It's not quite as drag and drop as some of the other ones, uh, but it is outstanding for complex commerce, right? So it just kind of depends on where you are in the in the spectrum. And interestingly enough, I have to bring this up because it's really funny <laughs> when I listen to you. So when they were here consulting with me, um, I'm like, God, I meet my son. My son is a, a is a 21 year old. Um, he knows everything. He's a, definitely an entrepreneur. It takes right after his mother, um, but uh, at a much larger, younger age, starting this. And he came in and he met met them and and um, asked about the website. And um, he was having it built on. He was oh, having somebody, a friend helping them on WordPress. And um, Monica's like. No, you need to use Wix. And he started with Wix, jumped over to WordPress because he had a friend who could help him. And um, Monica's like, no, because you, you're always going to need him. Always. With everything you do, you're always going to need him. And Justin's like, nope, 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 nope. I got this. He's a friend. Blah, blah, blah. Every excuse in the world. Went on for a while. Monica's like, you need to switch to Wix. You can do this. Because he can. He's totally capable of doing it. Um, he, he, yeah, so um, got, got on this call with him today uh, um, with, with Monica and Lewis, and I said, so guess what? I said, Justin's friend, he's got a lot of family problems right now. He had to switch to Wix because the guy can't help him anymore. So it, listen to what they say. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the thing about the platform is it's not, it, it's incredibly powerful. Uh, three years ago, it was a very different, like, kind of beginner thing. Uh, now they've gotten so large that every, well, most uh, third party software is now integrate. So you can add scheduling, you can add, um, you know, uh, loyalty programs and gift cards and all of the things that a few, just a few years ago you needed a platform like WordPress to do. Almost all of that. Um, is all available now on simpler platforms like like Wix. And so, um, yeah, we, we rarely find people that need the complexity of a WordPress um, site. So yeah. the thing about Lewis and I is just we have a lot of experience in certain things, right? And, and we're going to guide you in the way that we're going to we're, we're going to give you an honest opinion. You're, you're going to go with whatever it is that you want to do. Right. And it's no skin off our back if you choose to go a different direction. But just know, like, we genuinely want to help people. Like, we're incredibly passionate about it. If you can't tell, I've been in your shoes before. I know how hard some of this stuff, how confusing some of this stuff can be. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, if you want, like, an honest opinion about whatever it is in your business, um, just let us know because we will encourage you in the directions that are going right but we will also challenge you 
in the things we're like, mm, you might want to consider going a different direction with that. Here's why though, right? We'll give you some reasoning as to why it was a bad idea. The thing about the website in particular is I was very, I've been in his shoes before where I've had multiple websites. I knew nothing about websites at the time. And I felt so stuck because I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know Lewis at the time. I didn't know somebody that could explain it to me in layman's terms. And when somebody told me my website wasn't good enough and it needed work, I didn't really know what that meant at the time. Okay. And I found that incredibly frustrating, as many of you can probably relate when it comes to a topic that you just don't know very well um, and you feel pressure to make a decision. It can be very overwhelming. Um, but the thing was, is I didn't want him to get stuck. And I was so adamant, like Lewis was getting on me about it because I was so adamant because I've been there before where I'm relying on people to do stuff. And sometimes you can't, even if it's a friend or family member, like you really have to control a lot of things, but you also have to delegate to people that you can trust and also learn some of those things that you're getting help with. So yeah, I was just really passionate about him not setting himself up where he got stuck after the website was more uh, developed. So, yeah. And, and he's, to uh, he's totally capable of doing all of it. Um, but yeah. I think once he, yeah, he, he is, he's like, Ooh. um, yeah. he, he's a go get a little cocky, but you know, um, <laughs> I'm his mom. I can say that. Um, but, um, you know, what, what's good to understand is that if, if what, yeah, let me try this again, start over again to a good takeaway from what Monica's saying is, you know, some, for me, the website overwhelms me, it overwhelms me. Um, I really want to do it all myself. I can't. There's no way. So um, whether you want somebody to come alongside you to t you know say this is how you set it up, but more importantly, they're able to set it up for you if you want them to do something like that. But you can take it over. You can take it over partially. So if you're overwhelmed by that, it's okay. They can teach you the basics so you right. can handle some of it on your own. Um, they can handle a lot of it for you. It's like whatever you want, whatever works for you. So you don't have to feel that pressure of, you know, oh my gosh, a new website, seriously? I, I uh, you know, um, so it's just, that's, a, I think, a very, I think that's what I like about you guys the most um, on, from my business is that here are my identifiable areas I need help with. And, you know, at how much are we going to bring you in? Like, I know for this area, you guys need to do it. There's no way. We don't have the personnel. We don't want to hire somebody to do that function. We can save money, actually, by having a consultant do it over having an employee do it in our case. Yeah. Um, so we reduce staff, and where we're having them work on an area that we just really are not strong in. Um, and it just makes sense. It just makes sense. So whatever that may be, it, it, it's... That, that's one of the things I love, I love the most. So, um, and everything, uh, everything with us is nothing is in a contract or anything, right? We can help you if you need help. It's a busy season. We could not help you for months because you, it's a slow season. You're taking vacation and you don't need any help right now. Right. Um, there's also no dumb question. There's, this is a judgment free zone. We work with people that literally have no idea how to start a business, um, but are fantastic at what they do. Um, and they just don't know how to monetize it. And that goes for both people in the dessert industry. We also have like very well established uh, under our other brand, like periodontists and dentists, right? They went to school for, for that sort of thing. They didn't go to school for business. So we can help people at all different levels and we meet you where you are. So please don't feel like um, you need to get it together before you ask for help. That's what we're here for. Yeah, and don't drive yourself insane for years like I have done. And, and don't get in your own way. That's something that Lewis and I are, we, we see a lot is you will be the reason why you don't get to where you want to be by asking, by not asking for help, by putting it off, by I can figure it out later, by I'll reach out to my friend. I'm going to save $10 here, like spend the $10, whether it's anything, if, if it's going to affect your, if it's going to improve your business growth, your learning, your development, whether it's a video online, whether it's a class, do that. That You'll find that to be helpful. Yeah. And it goes back, like, I'm going to rewind all the way back to the beginning when I was talking about the blue saving time um, over hand decorating. It's you think right. of it the same right, way. You can hand decorate each cookie, but you're not going to yeah. get the pictures before it's going to look. Yeah. 
So you bring in the equipment, in this case, sugar strategist, to help you with the things that that just is too time consuming because they could do it in less time. So you think of them as a glue. They can do all that cleaning for you while you're doing something else. Same idea. They can work on your website while you do something else. And and these are very competent people. That's I think <laughs> you know one of one of the things you know, you see me bring on various people throughout the years we've been doing this because I believe in what they're doing for, and and yeah, you know, this really isn't about icing images like a decorating thing. This is more about you in ways that I saw in the in our four hour meeting um, <laughs> that that um, I felt really should be um, emphasized for everybody to hear at, and use and put it or put it in their back pocket for later. It's just it's great information. They're great people. Um, they've done it. They continue to do it. They're very successful. They're not all talk yeah, by no means at all. By no means. Yeah. And, and if anybody, one of one of the, our really strong skill sets we've missed. If anybody needs help having their cookies eaten, we also have <laughs> yes. incredibly strong skills in that area. That was my job for years. Yeah, she, yeah. Well, that's a free service, isn't it? That that is a. I used to get paid yeah. for that. She that used was, to get paid for that. That was Lewis doesn't. Lewis doesn't. Mine. You, all you I need. Retired, I'll actually. I'll even pay for postage. Just send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> No, one thing I will say that I think a lot of people may need help with, potentially, the thing with the different blue machines is the amount of versatility that they all offer, right? And making sure that you're thinking outside the box and, and products that you can be selling and ways that you can be modifying things to add to your product line without really adding to your product line by just A, understanding the machine's capabilities, but then B, understanding what products you can sell um, within your skill sets to be able to maximize that as well. So if you need help with like brainstorming product ideas, whether it's different shapes, different flavors of stuff, how to do your menu and things of that nature, um, we can certainly help you with that. But make sure you're clear on the different things that these machines can do for you. Because what I've seen at shows with these machines is like endless possibilities. I mean, you could be not even making cookies you can be just doing selling printed fondant or cake boards, cake boards or, or right. lollipop like like literally so many like i could have killed it if i had this machine <laughs> like i've even thought about going back into business because i feel like i could have done so much more like yeah it, it, there's there's so many possibilities don't don't just get stuck in what you're doing today you know ma master what you're doing today but have a plan of other ways that you can do different things that can add money without adding necessarily more work exactly and it's funny because i was having a conversation with somebody who was frustrated because they um you know they had competition and i'm like that's 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 normal you know you have to think outside of the box and so by by using this one machine one machine you can add so many variables of mm -hmm. yeah you think about the party you got the cake now you can do cupcakes and cookies okay that's what everybody does okay i can now print on mentos i can print on tiramisu i can print on gum sticks of gum tortillas have a taco night it's not even that uh, sweet you know there's just yeah. it goes on if it's flat you can print on it you know yeah. even sushi which is not totally flat and we print it on it you know so it's just, it, it think outside the box. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Like what you have done for that industry is, is really game changing. I feel like when I think back to how I did things, I feel so like archaic. Yeah. It's like using a typewriter again, right? I literally, so Lewis was referring to this order that I got. If anybody has any questions, obviously chime in, but uh, I did an, an order for 18,000 cookies, right? I did it in two weeks. They were all hand decorated with a logo, six packs. So like 3,200 six packs or so shipping to 3,200 different people with 3,200 different greeting cards. Right. So that means we had to fold boxes. We had to stuff envelopes. We had to, it was a lot. We did it in two weeks. Right. Um, man, this would have been a game changer. Game, game changer. changer. It would have been a game because I had to teach people how to do it, right? We were working with chocolate at the time. I would have convinced them to do it in a different way had I had a machine like yours. Yeah. So you, you know how to get those kind of clients that have 3,200 different 
things they want to purchase from you. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, 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 it started from my website. To be honest, I never met this client. I don't even remember their name. They found me online and the rest is history. That was the same client I was doing 1600 Oreos for a month. It was a $60,000 order for the holidays for that one client. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they're out there. They're not the only ones we helped last year. You can do it from home. This right. isn't like I didn't have a store at that time. Right. Yeah. We, we, I mean, we helped a client just this past year uh, after she's been out of the business, but we, we helped one of our clients put together a, a box for their employees that had numerous things. And because we're not in that business anymore, we used a number of local uh, folks um, around us to bring in custom printed M&Ms and, and chocolate covered Oreos with logos and sugar cookies uh, or shortbread cookies with logos uh, uh, from different local bakers um, and, and treat makers um, and, put, and put it all together. So uh, yeah, that it's, um, that's one of our core things. Um, you know, we, we work with a lot of clients across different industries where often we will do the sales calls for them, right? Uh, we speak the corporate language. Um, that's where we both spend a big portion of our lives. So yeah, we, we help folks with those kinds of, uh, finding those kinds of customers, um, all the time. Wow. The other thing I'm going to throw out there is your networking. Yeah. So Lewis and I met through a networking as he, a networking group, as he mentioned. Right. I got about ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of business just from one networking group. Okay. Wow. Um, a year. A year. Yeah. You want to make sure once you get your ducks in a row from your brand identity, right? Your logo, your email, your website. Focus there first because that's where you're going to be sending everybody to. Right. That comes before your social media. Right. Because your social media is a tool to drive people to your website. Right. While we're on that topic real quick, remember, it is not about followers. It is about conversions. Right. And, and people buy because they like you, they trust you, and they may have never tried your product. Right. Um, we got a great referral from somebody just recently, a client of ours under Sugar Strategist introduced us to um, a company totally unrelated to the dessert industry to ask if we could help, help, help them with, with stuff. Right. Because of relationships. When you start going out there and handing out your, your business card, whether it's a chamber, whether it's Business Network International, whether it's Nexco, whether it's your Rotary, whether it's your mom's group, any of those things, remember that just because that person may not be your client, they know people that could be your client, right? Mm -hmm. They have friends and family that work for other companies, their neighbors and things like that. So don't just judge people when you meet them for what, like, what they do also remember these people have a network as well so i'd encourage everyone to start doing more networking if you are looking to be in the corporate space that is where the corporate people are right so and, and, and uh, uh avis i saw your your comment there you know in as you move up market right when people aren't ordering a dozen or five dozen uh someone a corporations is that's um placing a sixty thousand dollar order uh, for holiday gifts for their client, uh, for their uh, employees have a lot of choices, right? They're probably talking to someone about high end uh, jackets with their logo on it. They may be talking to a couple of people about edible stuff. Uh, you know, there's a lot of folks. So th those actually become sales calls, right? It's not going to be Facebook messenger back and forth. It's not even going to be email. They're going to want to get on the phone. They're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to hear about, okay, you need to get this to 3,200 folks, how are you going to accomplish that? Uh, have you done this before? Do you have a plan for doing it? Right. Um, all of those sorts of things. Um, they're going to, they're, they're going to uh, want to have that conversation. Um, and, and often in a lot of detail, yeah. um, you know, uh, Monica is a very uh, meticulous person when it comes to things like that. Uh, our entire business is driven around project planning software and spreadsheets and, and all that. And it was the same thing in her business is why she was so successful in that corporate space. Because, uh, you know, when they are expecting to give gifts to their clients for the holidays and they don't get there, not only are they gone as a client, but likely other people in the business community because people talk. Right. Uh, and so that's a space where you just, you really got to be ready when you, when you dive in, you got to be ready to, to, to handle it a, a little bit differently than, than the more sort of person to person space that, that a lot of us are used to starting it at least. Exactly. Exactly.
And you know, I know if if some of you are struggling, it, this is the this is the quietest point time of year for us. Right. Uh, just starting to pick up again, yep. um, coming off of um, summer break for kids. But um, you know, when when business is slower, um, and and yes, at that point, if it's slower, your money's not coming in as much, which you spend is on improvements to your business, like consulting to get the. I mean. The information you just got here for free has been remarkable, um, remarkable. And um, if, if if you sit down with Lewis and Monica, they're going to be focused just on you and what you need specifically. So it's this is where it's important with that you focus in on you. Spend and I'll be honest, that I was kind of surprised at your rates. I guess I shouldn't say that, but um, <laughs> um, they're they're lower than I thought. Um, which is good, and I probably I'm like, oh wait, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but um, but but this my point is is this is the time that you actually spend time to build your company. It's important to spend the money during COVID. You spent the money on for us. It was it was in building relationships because that's all we could do during right. the time. Yeah, and I mean was, during peak time, you're in survival mode. Right, you're getting the or you're in survival mode. The idle times are when you have to make the making when you can work on the business rather than in it. If I borrow a cliche, right? Um, you know, for for anybody that might be interested in dipping their toe in the water, on our website you'll find a classes tab. Uh, one of the things that you'll find in there is an open Q and A session. It's a little different than this in that it is uh, every it's on a Google Meet, so everybody uh, has the ability to verbalize questions and follow up actually uh, face to face. Uh, you know, feel free to join us there. It's a great way to dip your toe in the water and, and ask more specific questions, um, and uh, a great way to kind of just get get to, get to know us a little bit better. And you also meet some other bakers, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Yep. All right, so um, I haven't been able to read everything whoops, that I wanted to. So thank you for those who posted and um, and I can I keep I just the website I just put up there, Dee Dee. Um, but um, thank you for all your participation in here, guys. This was wonderful. I'm like on fire. <laughs> I'm like so excited. Um, you get excited about it as well. Like it's just yeah, I talk about this stuff for hours. We do. Yep. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we can't drive anywhere without uh, it being a long, in-depth conversation about a client or a situation we ran into or, or something. Or like even that. what we're doing and how we're going yeah, to do different. Yeah, sure. yeah. Exactly. Daddy says, do you have any pricing strategies to share labor specifically? I create custom chocolate and labor is a big part of my order. I handcraft everything and do edible printing without the blue. Well, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, in some cases, not every, you shouldn't be making everything, right? If it costs you too much to make and you can't be price competitive, in some cases, those products just won't make the list, right? Yeah. If you're doing this for business, there's other people that do it as a paid hobby. If you do it as a paid hobby, that's very different, right? But if you do it as a business, then you're going to want to look at the numbers. Everything's going to need to be numbers driven. Um, I know that doesn't help, but some of these things are out of your control, right? You have to work with the controllables. Um, you can also look at ingredients and sourcing and stuff like that and see if you can get economies of scale. Are you buying, um, you know, one pound at a time of different things? Can you buy five pounds? Can you partner with other people in your area and get free shipping because you're buying more from a vendor and things of that nature? Um, but Lewis, I yeah, I mean, at the, at the at the end of the day, in a product where labor is such a, a big component, you need to decide what it's a fair to pay yourself and b that it makes it worth it for you. So, you know, as Monica said, some people do it as a hobby or even just as a passion project, in which case maybe that's not that important to you. But if you're trying to do it as a business, what you don't want to end up is at the end of a month looking at the numbers and realizing if you just picked up some shifts at McDonald's, you would have ended up putting more money in your pocket than all the hard work that this is, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, there will be products that are not viable. I've had a few companies where we thought we had a brilliant idea. And then once we costed everything out and we looked at what people were willing to pay for it, we went, you know what? Nobody's going to pay $62 for this thing and we can't sell it for less than that and have a viable business and, and we have to move on. So, you know, you'll, you'll have to figure out what you can do. And, and then obviously look if there's ways for you to uh, 
um, streamline not just the purchasing and supply side, but the actual build side. So Monica mentioned this chocolate yeah, enrobing machine, right? Go ahead, yeah. please. Yeah. I, I want to add something because I did handmade chocolates. Not everything I did was customized. My company started on customized truffles that are all hand rolled, the hand dipped, hand decorated the whole nine, right? Couple of things that you can look things that you can look at. One is adding other products that don't take quite as long to make that also add profitability, right? So let's say I sell truffles, but I could also sell maybe cupcakes. Now I'm just gonna throw things out there. They have to work within your brand. Don't just be a complete chocolatier and then randomly offer cupcakes, right? Um, but offer products that can add more profitability that don't take as much time to make. The other thing is, is don't be selling truffles one or two at a time. If you need to sell 12 or a pack of 24 and that is your minimum, then that is your minimum. If a customer wants six, you don't offer six, you offer 12 or 24, whatever those numbers look like for you, right? Makes sense. Um, and then the other thing is, is that just because let's say you sell truffles, for example, doesn't mean you have to make all the truffles you sell, right? I made a lot of truffles myself. I went to food expos that had manufacturers of high-end Belgian chocolates, truffles, chocolate-covered graham crackers, chocolate-covered Oreos, dip this, dip that, all kinds of stuff. And I sold some of those as well. So I might make, of the 15 flavors that I make, I or offer, I might make nine of them, and I might have six brought in from somewhere else. They're the same quality, they're the same size, and people love them and they don't know and it doesn't matter. They're coming to you for a quality product. If you go anywhere, most places, whether it's a bakery, cafe or whatever, they're not making 100% of what you see there. Um, so don't be afraid to use some other resources. So having worked for a manufacturer, there's companies out there that spend thousands, if not millions, into product development to create great products that could totally be in line with what you're doing. If you have an opportunity to do an event, don't feel like you in a dessert table. Don't feel like you have to make everything that's on the dessert table, right? There are vendors out there that can provide things in cups with nice decorations that or that you can either use as is or that you can add to. Print something on a nice little piece of sugar or chocolate or something and add that to whatever you just bought, right? Add some customization to it, but don't do the entire thing. That will also help you with minimizing the labor, mm -hmm. um, minimizing some of your expenses. Because just because you buy it somewhere else doesn't mean it's more expensive. There are places that you can get a donut, for example, for 35 cents wholesale, and it tastes amazing, right? And then you charge $1.50 for it, and you just made money for not making anything, and they had a great experience. So yeah. there are other ways around it. Yeah. This has been awesome. I'm, like, so inspired. And... Uh, I love talking to you guys. <laughs> we love talking to you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, we're going to have probably have to stop at this point. I'd love to have you guys back on. I'm sure everyone here sure. agrees. Um, guys, I want to ask you all who are watching, share this with your business friends. Um, this, this, this.